Jim Hagedorn is the CEO and chairman of Scott's miracle Grow. Mr. Hagedorn, welcome. Good to have you with us. Hey, guys. Under the radar? <laughs> We're not that under the radar, well, are we? Well, no, I, I don't think so. But, I mean, th there's been a lot of attention on a lot of high-tech stocks that have done reasonably well and some of the obvious ones. And so I guess the characterization is that is that you guys might not be an obvious uh, sort of stay-at-home stock. But at any rate, let's move to the to the question here, which is this. I can't imagine a company more that was hit with the eye of this storm more than yours. I can't imagine that there's a more important time of the year for your business than March and April when, the, when this really hit. How'd you get through it? Well, we started looking at the possibility of this occurring once we started seeing news in early January coming out of China. And I think at first people thought I was pretty crazy as I talked to my team about my concerns. Um, and as we got into February, we started legit putting plans together to operate remotely. Um, and, you know, we didn't know. I think like everybody else, there was no playbook for what was going to happen. We didn't know we would be viewed as essential. Our retailers would be viewed as essential, that consumers would really want to get to garden. So we really didn't know what was going to happen. We were pretty nervous about it. Um, and I think as soon as this started going down, what we started seeing is that not only could we operate from home very effectively, which we've done and continue to do, um, but our field force, well, so, you know, probably two thirds of our people are manufacturing sales distribution people. They did have to go to work. Unlike the rest of us who were able to operate from home, we paid them 150% of their normal pay. They have done absolutely heroic work out in the field. You know, probably at the peak, we had 450 ish out of called 5,000 field people who were, um, reporting COVID-like symptoms, although very few of them were ever mm -hmm. tested. And um, so they did heroic work. The retailers, I think, got their heads around what was happening, particularly the sort of smaller footprint uh, retailers. And what became clear right away is that we had a license to operate as far as essentiality and consumers wanted our products. And that's, it's been crazy ever since. Well, I'm a big consumer I, I'm, uh, of your products. Uh, I, I need some. Uh, I need you. some starter fertilizer, by the way. But that's another matter. You can make that happen. Let me, let me go back to something you said. <laughs> no, that's all right. I know where to find it. Um, uh, let's go back to something you mentioned earlier, and that is that a lot of your workforce began early on to work remotely, and it has done very well. What percentage of those workers do you expect are going to come back to an office ever? What are you planning for there? Um, you know, I think we're mixed on that. I can just tell you from my point of view, um, you know, I'm someone who commuted from New York to Ohio every day um, and and back. And I can tell you I'm not we're we we're up at our home in Vermont. Uh, I'm not going back to the life that I had before. And as we poll people, I think there's a lot of people who are I mean, first of all, we're operating the business really well um, remotely. And so I think our sort of culture, our willingness to learn as we go has has helped us. And I think when you talk to a lot of people, um, a lot of the marketeers, a lot of people who are dealing in group settings remotely, um, probably they're, they're very happy being home. And so I think there's probably some people that will be able to work more from home than from work. Mm -hmm. There's other people, I think a lot of our finance people, to be honest, they have more solitary work when I talk to them, they actually, especially if they have young kids, they want to get back to work. But I, I think we have a super unique culture, a good one. Um, and I think the more we're away from home, I do fear a little bit what I'd call cultural dilution. So we're looking to right. begin phasing back um, to work probably early July. Um, so our sales and okay. manufacturing are already at work. Our remote people, uh, R&D has already come back because we need, we have a lot of biologic work happening. Um, and so our executive team and our support staff, we're looking probably in July, but I think maybe one or two days a week. And it's mostly to remind people who we are. Right. Right. I don't think we have a need to rush back to work. I'm, okay. I'm still nervous yeah. and I personally don't want 
to get anybody sick at work. We have been very lucky yeah. that um, nobody's been killed. Yes. So, um, well, yeah, I, I, think uh, you could, I certainly you may, uh, I, I appreciate your I appreciate your prudence, and I'm sure all of your employees do. I do hear you say that you yourself are going to spend a lot less time traveling back and forth and on airplanes. Jim Hagedorn, we'll see you again soon. Thank you very much. See Kelly. You.